thank you Mr. Priya sir uh, for giving me the opportunity to talk about the latest type of IOS. Uh, as you all know, the human crystalline lens acts as an autofocus camera by providing focal points on demand. Automatic clear images are at, uh, formed for all distances and uh, one clear image is formed at one time. However, the human eye has some problems also like presbyopia, astigmatism and cataract for which we, the solutions are available like use of spectacles, contact lenses or refractive corneal surgery and in case of cataract, eye removal, uh, cataract removal with the implantation of the intraocular lens. Uh, what is an ideal intraocular lens? Uh, the peak visual performance occurs around 19 to 25 years of age. At this age, it is said that there is no spherical aberration. However, the spherical aberration increases with the age, and if we have to, uh, the ideal IL should, uh, should be such that it uh, corrects all the spherical aberration. Similarly, all the spherical aberration, uh, chromatic aberration should also be corrected by an ideal IOL. Next comes the astigmatism. It is estimated that about 13% patients are astigmatic neutral at the time of surgery for the cataract. The amount of astigmatism ranges from the 87%. They suffer from some type of astigmatism, out of which 64% have astigmatism between 0.25 and 1.5 diopters and 23% above 1.5 diopters. This is again shown in this graph. Then the our aim is to provide good visual equity for all distances both during mesopic and photopic conditions. Ideal IOL should not cause any glistening because this leads to decreased contrast sensitivity and the visual equity. The uh, good uh, visual equity should be provided both during day and night. Scotopic sensitivity should be maintained by the ideal IOL. Ideal IOL should not cause any glare or halos and also provide good depth of field. Also, it is uh, one important thing. The, uh, it is said that the posterior defective sur defective surface of the eye causes less amount of light scatter as compared to the anterior defective surface. Ideally, there should not be any light scatter. As far as the toric eyes are concerned, rotation stability is of utmost importance. Also, there should not be any PCO because of the eye after the cataract surgery. So what we need is the intraocular lens which corrects uh, spherical and the chromatic aberrations and should correct any astigmatism, should have good rotational stability and should provide excellent vision for all the distances without any glare, halos or glistening. However, no such intraocular lens is available at present. We started with the monofocal rivals then came to the multifocal and now the multifocal toric eyes, which gives correction for the press biopia as well as the astigmatism. Uh, basically, there are two uh, basic designs for the multifocal eyes. Uh, on, on that, the toric component is added. These are the diffractive type and the refractive types. The refractive eyes have a refracting surface and they have annular zones, or multiple annular zones of different optical powers ranging from the center to the periphery. Alternatively, there are distance and near annular zones creating two to three focal points at different pupillary sizes. In this case, 100% light reaches the retina as compared to the diffractive IOS in which the amount of light which reaches the retina is less. In the second is the diffractive IOLs, which are closely uh, spaced steps. Uh, these are closely uh, spaced step concentric rings on either on, on the anterior or the posterior surface of the intraocular lens. And they diffract the incoming light into two different focal points, one for distance and another for near. They are essentially bifocal lenses. However, some manufacturers come uh, uh, 
So say that they have also have a intermediate grid for intermediate distances. Then the problem of the less light reaching cases of diffractive IOL is being solved by the apodization technology in which there is a gradual reduction or blending of the defective step ions. Patient selection has been uh, discussed. Coming to the individual IOLs, the technis multifocal toric IOL is a hydrophobic type of defective IOL. It is available in spherical powers from plus 5 to plus 34 diopters in increments of 0.5 diopters and cylindrical powers from 1.5 to 4 diopters. It has an add power for near of plus 4 diopters and it is available in uh, 6 mm optic diameter and 13, 13 mm overall lens diameter. It has a diffractive surface on the posterior surface of the intraocular lens. Then the second is the restore multifocal toric. It is a hydrophobic, apodized, diffractive type of iron. It has nine, the number of steps are nine, and it is available in spherical powers from plus six to 30 diopters in increments of 0.5 diopter, and cylindrical powers from one to four diopters. It has an add power of plus three diopters, and the optic diameter and the overall length of the intraocular lens is same as the technis, that is six and 13 millimeters. Third is the carnalized multifocal toric iron. It is a hydrophilic intraocular lens, multifocal, uh, multifocal toric with hydrophobic surface. It is again a diffractive type of iron. It is a preloaded, can be implanted through 1.8 millimeter incision. And overall uh, optic diameter is 6 millimeter and total diameter is 11 millimeter. It is available in so from minus 10 to plus 24 diopters at 0.5 diopter increments in the spherical range and one uh, plus one to plus four diopters in the cylinder. This type of IOL has the add power of plus 3.75 diopters for the near. Next is the Rayner multifocal toric IOL. This is a hydrophilic refractive type of IOL having four or five annular zones. Available in optic sizes of 5.75 and 6.25 millimeters and 12 to 12.5 for the overall length size. This is available from plus 14 to plus 32 diopters in the spherical range and cylinders from plus 1 to plus 4. These type of IOLs have add power of plus 3 or plus 4. Then comes the uh, fine vision multifocal toric IOL. In this the anterior surface has two diffractive profiles. Well, first profile is for the distance and the near and the second one is for distance and intermediate. In this, there are 30 or more optical steps as compared to 12 or less in most other intraocular lenses. This is actually a trifocal type of intraocular lens, a hydrophilic variety with diffractive technology available in a 6 mm optic and 11.4 mm overall diameter. Available from plus 6 to plus 35 diopters in the spherical range and plus 1 to plus 6 in the cylindrical. The add powers are 1.75 diopters for the intermediate distance and 3.5 for the near. Then the top con multifocal toric IOL. Unlike the uh, concentric ring pattern, this has a sector shaped add segment. Uh, this has been taken from the cues have been taken from the uh, bifocal uh, glasses of the Benjamin Franklin, and it is a refractive type of IOL with hydrophobic surface. The overall uh, diameter is 11 millimeter and the optic diameter is 6 millimeter. Available from 0 to 36 diopters in the spherical range and 1.5 to 3 in the cylinder. And it has the add power of plus 3. It can be implanted through incision of 2.2 or 2.6 millimeters. To summarize, cataract procedures are trending towards the refractive of IL technologies. There is increasing demand on the, from the patients for the better offerings. Many types of multifocal toric IOLs are available. However, 
the choice depends on the availability of the IOL, cost, support from the company, and the last but not the sudden choice. Thank you, sir.